this time. Brother Tyler, you're with us. Brother Tyler, you're there. And I, I know he's he's uh, he's trying to uh, look like he's 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 uh, trying to connect here, uh, like some audio uh, issues. So we we we'll we'll come back we'll we'll come back to him as he's uh, working on getting himself uh, connected. Uh, this this evening we are uh, our, our subject our topic uh, I should say is on marriage and, uh, and and relationships and I'm I'm reminded in the book of book of Joshua that that Joshua as the head of his household made a very bold made a very bold statement and and which I think that every uh, head of household every man of of God, everyone that is uh, has a household uh, should take a page out of Joshua's book. But he made a very bold statement by letting everyone know. He said, "As for me, in my house, uh, we're going to serve the Lord." And it, and it, you know, it, it, it's beautiful to make a, a statement like that to your to your wife and to your children and say, you know, we're just going to trust God. We're going to serve God. In this household, while others might be moving in so many different directions, we're going to serve, we're going to serve the Lord. And then we take that same, uh, that same statement and we make that known to folks in our sphere of influence. Uh, then it, it, it really takes on, uh, uh, a, a lot of value because folks be, begin to to watch you, uh, watch you serve the Lord, watch you trust the Lord with all of your heart, soul, and mind, and and and, and so we are. Uh, we're going to be looking. At, we'll be looking at that, and uh, we um, again we 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 have a gentleman that's going to lead us in a, a praise and worship song, and we we have several uh, uh, prizes that's been don donated. Uh, to us by the Madeline Law Group. So uh, periodically, we're gonna uh, gonna pause and do a little drawing, and um, and, and and bless some of you with some, uh, some gift cards, as well as a, a flat screen television uh, that's been made available just as an opportunity uh, to bless the people of God. You know, <laughs> bless the uh, people of God. You know, there uh, uh, there there's so much to be said about. Uh, about men, uh, we are we rarely do what women do. Women get together and they encourage one another, and they share, and they do different types of things. And even in this whole pandemic era, uh, there's a lot of things going on uh, with uh, with women in, in ministry. But uh, but again, the men are you know we're all waiting on this pandemic. Uh, to blow by us, but uh, you know, based on everything that we're hearing in the uh, in the news, it uh, appeared that it's going to be around a little while longer. So we need to do everything we can to uh, to allow us to uh, allow our uh, swords to be sharpened, iron sharpens iron, uh, to be sharpened in this time, so we don't lose anyone in the faith that no one fall. Uh, by the wayside, uh, because we're not able to look a man in the face and say, we've been missing you in church, we've been missing you in Bible study, but a lot of folks have really have fallen by the wayside. And we trust that these, these uh, opportunities for men to come together and have a conversation would be very fitting and, and very encouraging uh, during these times. Brother Tyler, you're, uh, you're, 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 you're able to connect at this time. I was able to. <laughs> okay, go go right ahead, my brother. Okay, gonna do a rendition of uh, Mary. Did you know? Yes. Thank you. 
Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you deliver will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind? Mary, did you know that your baby would calm a storm with his hat? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? And you've kissed your little baby. You've kissed the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, or the dead will live again. The lame will be, the dumb will speak, the praises of the land. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will not be with Did you know that your baby was heaven's perfect love and a sleeping child you're holding is the grave Amen, 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 amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, my dear brother. Thank You're you. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Yeah, Mary, Mary, uh, did you know that's uh, that's always been uh, one of my one of my favorite one of my favorite songs during the uh, Christmas during the Christmas time of the year. Mine too. <laughs> yeah, amen. So what we want to do at this time, anyone got a special testimony that you'd like to share uh, with the man? Uh, just unmute yourself and go right ahead, please. Any special testimony? Uh, God did something. Uh, God brought you through something. Um, yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to say something, Reverend. Go ahead, sir. I was I was in uh, Vietnam. This is Lewis Tyler. I was in Vietnam many, many, many years ago. And I was a dog handler. I was an air police dog handler. I had signed up for something else, but they put me in police. So a friend of mine told me, make the best of it. Go to the canine section. So I did. And when I left Vietnam after one year, I had something called myeloproliferative disease, but I didn't know it. It was in my body. And it didn't, I left there in 1971. I went there from 70 to 71, one year. It didn't start to show up till 2000, the beginning of 2017. And what it was, was uh, it made my platelets and my bone marrow produce too many white platelets. So I have to take a pill now, it's called, uh, hydroxyurea and what that does it controls the count the uh the white uh platelet count 
And the danger from it is that if you get too many white platelets, they're very sticky and they can't pass so you can get a blood clot. And God really directed me through this whole thing uh, because my doctor just happened to notice my primary at the VA. She just happened to notice one day, she said, your platelets, all of a sudden, they seem to be higher than they've ever been since you've been coming here. They've always been normal before. And then uh, now they're, they're going up, you know. So I had to go to the UM and I got a doctor over there to do a biopsy because the, the veteran administration didn't have any hematology. So they sent me to UM. And I've been with this lady like going on four years. And just by the grace of God, uh, I give it all to him because if she had not discovered it, if he had not pointing it out to her, you know, a blood clot, you know, it's something that, boom, can happen just like that, you know. And for many years, it probably uh, threatened my body, but it didn't really show up until like the beginning of uh, 2017, you know, when she found it. So I, I praise God and I thank him. And I know that it was all in his plan, you know, uh, that it went the way it did. And I'm being compensated for it also, too, uh, um, 100%. Because of that, I'm 100% uh, disabled with the Veterans Administration. So uh, it was in his plan. You know, I didn't, I didn't plan it. You know, it's just the way it worked out, you know, for me uh, through him and through Jesus Christ, through the blood, you know. And I'm, I'm a very appreciative of that. Amen. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, we want to thank you for your, thank you for your service. And uh, we know that God is working it all out. And it's good that you can, you can see the hands of God in all that you're dealing with. Anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, anyone else? Uh, go next. Want to go next? Just another, uh, another quick testimony uh, before we jump in uh, and go real deep this evening. Anyone good else? Evening. Good evening, my brothers. Uh, Reverend Baker. Uh, the other Reverend Baker. This is Reverend Igodaro. I'm just calling in to check and, and just uh, fellowship with the brothers. I don't have a testimony, but thank God for the word and the testimony of our brothers and the brethren is inspiring. God bless you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So good. To Pastor Adam's on. <laughs> hey, Reverend Igadar, Pastor yeah. Adams is on as well also. Oh, my pastor. All right. I'm following, <laughs> I'm following good leaders. The yeah. guys <laughs> Hello, Pastor Adams. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so good, so good, so good to hear from you, doctor. We we trust all as well. Uh, give our give our regards to your precious wife. Thank you. We'll do it, and you do amen. the same. Thank you, sir. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna jump in again. We're our, our focus this evening is um, is on on marriage and relationships, and the you know the desire is that we will walk away. With, uh, with 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 some nuggets uh, to uh, to move forward with uh, this year, I would have uh, uh, the uh, conclusion of this close to the conclusion of this year. I will have 25, 25 years up under me, and I wow. I'm sure that there are some others on the on the line here that probably have me have have me beat. Uh, uh, Rev Reverend Adams, about how long you've been in the how long you've been in in this marriage thing? Uh, this will be uh, if God spares to make August. This will be our thirty first anniversary this August twenty fifth. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. Beautiful. Praise beautiful. Praise God. Anyone else want to? Uh, I know, uh, uh, brother brother Baker, you uh, you're still a rookie, right? You still, you still, on, you still on your honeymoon. <laughs> oh, the second, you know, the song says the second time around. Yeah, but this yeah. is the charm, you know. You, you know, I've been in marriage for a long time. If you could buy it at all, it's been a very long time. Uh, but praise be to God, because uh, you know it's like a double blessing for me. I was blessed, as you know, to be married to a, a wonderful woman. Uh, in my life, and uh, God saw fit to take her home, but uh, he blessed me and put another special woman in my life. Amen. Uh, and and uh, it's a man finds a wife, finds a good thing. So That's right. 
and so I, I it just double blessed me with the another good wife and you know and and, and it's, it's a good thing you yeah know? God yeah. said man should, should not you know, be alone yeah I see I can see through life you know where there are some reasons why we we should not be alone amen you know, amen. amen amen how many how many years you you have now uh, we this will be our sixth year. Six year, wow. man. Wow, it seemed like it was yesterday. <laughs> sure does. <laughs> wow. This will be our sixth year. Yeah. So yeah. It okay. Does. It's been it's, it's, it's been longer yeah. been longer than I thought. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we were we were there. We we're there. We thank God. Thank God for you and your precious precious wife. Anyone else want to just highlight a little bit about their uh, about the marriage? Uh, uh, you go right ahead. Uh, go right ahead. Hello, my name is Lixon. Only got four years, so I'm considered um, in the honeymoon or a rookie, like yeah. you mentioned, Pastor uh, Baker. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, well, keep the keep the excitement. Keep keep the excitement. Keep the honeymoon uh, flavor going. Don't don't shut it down. <laughs> Continue to sell it. Continue to celebrate. Anyway, uh, thank you, thank you all so much. Uh, we uh, we're we're blessed. We're blessed this evening to have a a, a speaker uh, with us, uh, um, a young a young man. And and I I must say um, I've been um, perhaps uh, more encouraged uh, by listening to him and uh, you know reading some material that he's put together than probably he is with me because of the, just the, the passion and the excitement he has concerning marriage. And, um, and uh, you know, he and I, we've been talking for the uh, last month or so about him um, making his debut, actually. This is his, uh, the, this is uh debut. Just want to uh, give you some highlights on our, uh, our speaker, Brother uh, Lixon Afford, uh, he is a uh, author, a recent author. In fact, uh, his book is hot off the press. It just came off the press uh, la last month, and uh, he's a he's a, a he's a, a graduate of the uh, uh, FI, FIU, and um, and he loves loves God's word and. Uh, Love, love sharing and 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 helping uh, helping folks. He's uh, he's uh, obviously married uh, and he has a uh, he has one one child and uh, and God spoke to him. Uh, then this young man, God spoke to him and told him he wanted him to write a book on marriage. Write a write a book on on marriage and uh, and God gave him just a special. Uh, revelation, a you know, special desire to to share with others what it means to have a winning marriage. You have a winning marriage, and we know, like anything in life, is all about how you look at it. You know, if 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 you feel you got a bad marriage and you're calling it bad, it's probably going to stay bad. Yeah. But uh, but when you feel like you're in a marriage and we're in it to uh, win it, well, you you are off to a good you're off to a good start. And so um, so this evening we have a uh, brother brother Alfred Alfred uh, here with us uh, to provide us with uh, uh, some insights on it. Uh, you know, again, we want to encourage you uh, if you have an opportunity. He is, his book has not hit the uh, print printed form at this point, but is is in the electronic form, and I had an opportunity to uh, you know to read it and um, and uh, and reflect on some things, and uh, and when I when I when I look at his book, it's it it, it reminds me of, uh, of 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 going back to the basics, and you know oftentimes when things are not working, uh, things are not going the way it should go, we have to go back and look at our foundation and kind of fix our foundation and get our foundation up to, uh, up to par. And, and in his book, as you know, he will highlight some points to it. In his book, he, he takes us back 
uh, to the foundation and to look at the look at the foundation because oftentimes just like in building if the if the foundation is not right i don't care how high you want to go you're going to you're going to continue to have problems until you deal with and get that foundation sured up and 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 in these modern day marriages there are all types of uh, foundational issues uh issues that um that that really make it very difficult for us to kind of go to the go to the next level, and 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 so our dear brother this evening, uh, he's going to just kind of kind of share with us some some insights, uh, you know that 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 the Lord has given him some insights that the Lord has given him that he loved to you know love to share with others, and that's the ultimate uh, purpose. Uh, and he'll he'll talk to us a little little more about God speaking to his heart. Again, uh, a young man, uh, uh, people of God, uh, been married for four years, and God gave him the the passion, the passion and the desire to speak in the hearts of other men and women about having a winning marriage, having a winning marriage. Uh, you know, been nice that we could have invited <laughs> invited some some of our sisters to listen in as well. But but his focus is kind of going to be toward us this evening. Uh, 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 my dear brother, uh, you're here with us, and and so uh, if we were in a church setting, we would uh, we would introduce you a little different. But I am uh, I'm blessed uh, to have met you to uh, become acquainted with you. We. We kind of crossed paths over the over the years, but now God has brought us to this point of now doing some ministry and kind of sharing with the people of God, uh, Brother Alfred. At this time, we we uh, we 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 welcome you, and we want to uh, just hear what God has laid on your heart uh, to uh, share with us today. And and uh, you know, I'm. I'm I'm a student. I'm still a student, although I got 25 years under my belt. I'm still a student when it comes down to marriage because I am I am still learning. I I I will not say that I have arrived. Uh, that is uh, that not a month that goes by that I find myself learning something different, even about my wife of 25 years. That you think I'd have mastered this thing, but uh, but I have not. And, uh, and, and in talking with so many other men, uh, I'm finding out that we're all still learning <laughs> to kind of get how to get it, how to get it right. Because one thing for sure, as we all grow and change, you know, uh, some of the things that we may have mastered down the road, we need to go back and, uh, and learn a little more. So without further ado, uh, it's my pleasure to uh, present to each of you, our dear brother, brother, Lixon Afric. Brother Afric, go right ahead, please. All right. Uh, good evening, guys. Uh, my name is Lixon Alfred. And um, this is my first time really speaking or presenting. So uh, I pray you guys um, be patient with me. Um, it's going to be a little struggle for me, but uh, we'll get through. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. So um, to me, um, marriage is basically when two individuals, uh, a man and a woman, come together um, mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, and become one. They think the same thoughts. They work together on all aspects of life. And in, in marriage, um, like Pastor Baker was just speaking about, um, the foundation is everything. So with me, everything I do when I wake up is um, making sure God is the focal point of my marriage, even though I have a partner, but I, I always tell myself that God is the focal point. He's everything, because without him, we wouldn't be who we are. I wouldn't be able to be even married, but um, he did send me a beautiful wife, and uh, for four years, we've been married, and um, I just uh, make sure that um, I always put him first, and um, to me, when I hear marriage, I, I hear, I hear, I hear marathon, not sprint. I hear, I hear like growth. I, I hear unity. 
and 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 where we live in today, uh, you know, marriage is not like marriage is not cool. It's not like something that people push out. Something that oh yeah, I enjoy doing it. I, I want to do it. They they basically devalue marriage, and I think they do that because a lot of people don't really um don't really understand marriage. Don't really know as soon as you get married that there's there's things that's coming like evil like evil forces that's coming against our marriage so if that's why i share a lot of this stuff in my book if we know these things are uh, we have evil forces against our marriage against our lives we'll know how to prepare how to better prepare for our marriage but um to have a, a successful marriage you just you need to have like a a mindset shift, you know, um, to make sure we always, we never remain complacent. We, we grow, we keep the spark going, keep the spark, the flames there, constantly dating, going on dates, um, learning each other's language. Because without, without understanding your partner, even though, you know, it's, it's always going to be more to learn about your partner. Um, there's always there's always going to be more but without understanding your partner you can't really um, love them the proper way and um, you know we have to keep that mindset of unity be patient remind ourselves that you know we are married our decisions my decision affects my wife's decision affects my family's decision altogether <clears throat> and the the enemy uses a lot of different um tools to 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 destroy our marriage starting off with our our money if you know the bible says that the 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 lender the, the borrower is slave to the lender and a lot of people my age don't know that or don't even understand that first but i've been to a, a position or point in life where it was kind of rough and it was because of excessive borrowing so i had to learn i had to um, get myself out of that slave mentality and and build and grow um that allowed me and my partner to grow together to, to grow together to become one financially um the importance of budgeting very important patience another tool that the enemy uses is music we can't be christian men and we're listening to songs that's made for single people or bachelors or or whatever whatever it is um but because there is music out there like that and um that's that's um as far as that uh but i always try to make sure that god is the focal point of my marriage of my life and it allows me to basically make make good decisions because we all are one maybe one decision away from wrecking our lives so and i also try to practice i mean do devotions daily and when i speak to relatives siblings i, I I always try to tell them that we need to, we have a, we have to shift our mind. So we like to say, I need to find time to pray. I need to find time. I need to find time to go to church, find time to do this. No, we need to make time because, you know, God is, he's important. He, he wakes us up every day. So um, we need, like I said, we need to, you know switch our vocabulary we need to make time to pray make time to fast make input put god in our calendar in our day in, in our schedule because it's very important um you know because if we don't pray we don't do devotions we don't come if we're not in communion with god then it comes the enemy with his temptations his pushing that pushing on his bad thoughts or adultery, what, you know, God knows what it is, but um, yeah, um, 
Another thing uh, I'd like to talk about is communication. Communication is very important because um, we we tend to hear something but not like understand uh, what was basically spoken. So we need to clearly under, clearly speak what clearly clearly understand what's being spoken before we respond. Because that's another thing that that's another challenge in in relationships and in, in in marriage, we we just re, we we here to respond and not here to understand. So I would um say you know make sure that we get a clear understanding of what is being spoken, and um prayer as far as prayer, we need to take take our prayer to. Uh, another level every time um and as far as fasting try to fast um like what like what i do is fast um i try to fast at least once a month and it, it'll be like almost like like almost a day of fasting which is very important um it allows me to um actually hear holy spirit that's, and that's how I um, end up writing the book. My my ebook um, was basically me fasting months after months. It took some time because I was I was um, struggling with a decision that I needed to make as far as business, which route I wanted to go. And I heard the Holy Spirit told me, "Do not go that way." And it was a particular individual that I was dealing with. He basically ordered my steps. He told me not to go that direction. Do not even trust that individual and and write a book on marriage. I it was not it was not hard for me because I knew I could write it. I knew I had the knowledge to write it, but oh man, yeah, I, I would encourage um people to like fast, make time for God, um put the cell phones down, turn off the TV, um, you know, this uh, Put him in your calendar, like you know, make time for him. And um, another thing I, I tell people of my age is um, finances. Um, people are willing to get married today, tomorrow, in a heartbeat, but when it comes to their money, they're like, no, I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not sharing my money. I'm not doing when I count. I, I you know my money is my money and her money. You know, I, I, when you get married, you you become one, not just mentally but physically, spiritually, financially. So, if one of those are are, are not aligned, then the the boat is basically in trouble because it's it's like um like two individuals living. Their own lives, which which is not aligned with marriage. Like we need to we need to um put our monies together and do things together. Because what's the sense of being married if I'm over here and spending my money however I want to, and my wife doesn't know how I'm spending it? It 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 it, it doesn't make sense. Like for me, um before I I do anything, I I share some thoughts with my wife. I ask her, what does she think? Because I see things one way and she sees something differently. So that's to my advantage. And um, just to my advantage to basically um, do money together with my wife. And I also tell people to, to make sure to pay their tithes, their tithes and their offerings because as far as promotions, um, pay raises, just blessings in general, they come from God, not from from humanity. They come from God. Um, and people need to understand that. You know, you can't can't get you cannot receive if you don't give. And um, yeah, I don't know if I left anything out. Yeah. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Um, 
I just got a just got a few questions for you. Um, and um, nothing, you know, <laughs> nothing pretty shattering, anything like that. Um, I I'd like for you to share with the men uh, what um, why why do you think God inspired you to uh, deal with marriage? Why uh, of I mean of all subjects, uh, why uh, why this subject? Um, I really don't know, but if I had to give a guess, um, people in my generation, the millennials, um, there's a lot of of adultery going on. People in my generation, we 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 think we think providing, just putting a roof over someone's head is that's what a husband is. People in my generation don't know the seriousness of of um, adultery. You're 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 one with one spirit, and you're going somewhere out and sleeping with other people. People don't know how bad that is. You know, your life can be one way. You can be doing good. You can have a stable job, paying bills, living living the American dream, like they say. And then the minute you start to commit adultery and everything start to sink you know people don't know these things people don't know the seriousness of it because i didn't know at one point and i learned and i i really don't know why he had me write this marriage that's what i'm on his journey to find out um i know i have a passion for christ but i'm still trying to see you know which i know he allowed allowed me to write this book he helped me to write this book but I couldn't say why, but I know a lot of people in my age don't know, you know, how to basically win in their marriage. They don't know a lot of these, they don't know that can be a reason why um, their marriage will break up. You know, they they don't work together. These are, these are things um, that they don't know. So I know them, so I just, I, I wrote the book and put it, made it clear so they'll know but to answer your question i really don't know but that's my opinion very good and uh, i'm gonna give the uh i'm gonna give the other men an opportunity uh, but I, i'm gonna say there, there there is a phrase that uh that i found in your in your book again i got the privilege had the privilege to read it and uh opposed to the uh, men they can only glean from what you have from what you have shared but you made a, a, a statement in, in this book that, that kind of sticks to me, and I'm gonna read it. You say, as a couple, you have to create a vision for your marriage. That, <laughs> that stuck with me right there. My, my, I, 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 I've never heard it. Uh, you know, we, we, we have visions for so many things in our lives, I mean. We even have visions for how we want our children to grow up and and uh, how we want our career to go up. But but I've never really looked at uh, my marriage as if you know what kind of vision uh, do I have for my marriage? And so you say, as a as a couple, you have to create a vision for your marriage, yeah. a one year, a five year, a ten year, and a lifetime vision for your marriage. A vision of ev a, a vision of everything from from time to blessing from time to blessings to for, to grow a beautiful successful marriage does not just happen by accident but through vision you said through constant prayer through communication is some of the few ways how it happens. And uh, and I thought that was very that was very uh, pro profound uh, to highlight that. And I got a few other things which I I will share with you. I'll share with you 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 privately on it. But I want to give the brethren an opportunity uh, to to comment and maybe uh, share some thoughts as 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 well. Go right ahead, gentlemen. Just unmute yourself and speak. 
I have you since you said about your generation, the millennium generation. Uh, I know marriage has been around for a long time. God instituted marriage, but I, I, I are you finding uh, there are less people married today, especially in the black population, than there was uh, uh, even when I first got married. Uh, actually, about 1965, probably about 65 percent of the black population was married. Now, in 2001, about 65 percent of the black population are not married. They either co cohabitating or living together or separate, whatever. But uh, a long time ago, a lot of people got fell in love. They coded and they got married. That was a desire to to be with one another to get married. Are you finding more today where millennials are uh, uh, jumping in the sack because of what they desire, that emotional, that lustful, and then they decide, oh, let's get married, uh, rather to think about marriage in the long run, like you said, a vision for marriage. Do you think they are lacking that vision or just uh, the lust of the marriage, the desire to? They're like yes, they are. They're they're lacking that um vision, and also um what they're doing is shacking up, and they don't understand. Um, there's some there's some serious stuff behind that that they should. If they knew the seriousness of just um just being with living with somebody and not being married, they wouldn't they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't. It's because they don't know, and a lot of them. They're, they're just complacent and to me it could be a lot it could be it could be anything but you know I, as as a vision is probably the, the the main thing i could say they don't have a vision or they don't love maybe they don't love the, the person that they're with because everything i do i try to you know make my wife happy everything i do so if i'm with a person even when i was dating you know, my, my number one assignment was to make my wife happy. You know, you know, all my decisions was, you know, to make try to make my wife happy. So if I'm dating a person and they and a, and a guy doesn't want to take that next step with that female, even though she might want to, you know, to me that tells me maybe he don't, you don't really love her or, you know, he's complacent. It could be anything or. You know, he won't have a lot of God in his life, or it could be anything. But vision is very important. I I often tell people, you know, be careful with being around people who don't have a vision for their life, for their career. For you gotta have a vision for everything, especially marriage. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. Any, anything else, Brother Baker? Yeah, it's, it's just seen, I, I don't know whether because of in today's society, because we have uh, uh, so many failed marriages that do some of the millennials decide that they don't want to get married because they want to have failure in their life or they don't want the challenge uh, that comes and the responsibility that comes with being married uh, because it's easy to walk away, especially if you're shacking, than really to actually have a modified, especially uh, holy commitment to one another in marriage it makes a difference. Yeah, it's um, that it's that and also people run away from the challenges and a, a biggest thing is today's social media um, things that's happening in the media people see couples breaking up and they don't know they're acting or that's a role and they try to like you know put place that in their lives like when I was growing up I used to see music videos I used to see um I used to see um I used to see artists singing and dancing with different women I used to think that was their lifestyle I later on in, I learned in life those guys were married they were just acting um, that's, we have to be careful with the media, especially in my generation, we're fooled, we're, we, we don't, we didn't know, you know, not, and these are the things I'm learning, like, 
a lot of these things we're seeing on TV is just for TV, it's just for, it's for money, but it's hurting people who don't know, who don't understand. Who, okay. it, it, it makes them don't want to get married because they they see <laughs> nobody trusts anybody these days. It's it's a lot. It's 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 a lot, but you know, we have to start somewhere, but it's a lot. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Anyone else? Anything else, uh, Brother Baker? I want to cut you off. Uh, no, he just made a nice point to talk about social media. Yeah. So I, I guess it has a, yeah, because the millennium generation is more into social media uh, today, and there's all types of stuff in, yeah. out there. And I guess it has all different types of influences. Yeah. Well, well, we, you know, we do know that, uh, that uh, divorce is, uh, you know, just prevalent uh, every everywhere, and the uh, uh, odds are against you from the, you know, from the day you say "I do." <laughs> uh, if 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 you don't do something uh, different, you know, if you don't truly truly take a take a stand as uh, as Joshua did uh, in his ministry, uh, you get the odds are against you, and everything that society can throw our way, uh, they will, it would uh, come our way and we certainly have to deal with it. Any other brothers wanna, wanna uh, share some thoughts uh, or, or direct some questions to our author uh, here this evening? Uh, give us the title of that book again. Uh, how to Win in Your Marriage. How to, how to Win in Your Marriage. Anyone else wanna give some thoughts? Um, yes, yes, uh, I, have, I, have a, I have a question. Um, I love the, um, I love the, um, thought of a vision in your marriage, um, that, that, that hit home with me as well. My question is, um, men and women look at marriage a little bit differently. How would you go about the concept of even constructing a vision for a marriage? Um, men kind of see marriage in a certain way and women kind of look at marriage in a certain way. Um, so how would that look if you were to, to sit down with, uh, with your bride to be or someone you want to spend your life with and plan a vision for your marriage? How does that look? Um, starts off with communication. You gotta, you, you gotta put out what is it that you want out of your marriage. And when I say vision, I, I mainly speak about growth. Like if okay. we were just if 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 we were just um going on dates one year, next year we need to be taking flights. And just, you know, doing things differently, but you know, have it written and actually taking action. But um, you know, sometimes, you know, you're not gonna always get what it is what it is that you want, but you know, it's it it'll work itself out. It'll 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 you know you know you guys will okay. agree, and um, you know, make sure hmm. you know you guys um have to basically communicate exactly what it is you want and yeah. hold each other accountable. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Uh, uh, thank you, brother Douglas. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yeah, I have a, a question I'd like to propose to uh, Reverend Adams, Pastor Adams, if you got your ears on. Yes, Pastor I do. Adams, uh, you've been in the ministry for a long time. And my question would be, how have you seen marriages? Are there any changes in marriages that you've seen within the church itself over the years? Okay, changes you mean in terms, I'm, I'm gonna ask you to, if you can maybe just clarify that a little bit. You say changes in marriages in the, in the church. Are you speaking um, specifically within the context of like in the church or are you just saying in general, just help me out a little bit with what you're looking for. Okay, uh, two things. One, uh, a lot of people come to church to get married. 
and and it you know because I guess that's the place that people seem to go to get married and 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 they come into the doors and out the doors and that's it but then there are some that uh, are married and they are in the church and uh, and I know personally I have seen some changes within the church with people that are married uh, and and some of them possibly you know you're all types of issues that in that rise up in marriages and I'm sure you've done a lot of marriage counseling over the years. So what changes have you seen from since your time in the ministry to what do you see today? Are there some things that you see that are different or have changed along the way? Okay, thank you for that question. And I transitioned into the car, so I don't know if uh, it's a little dark in here, so I won't worry about putting the video on. <laughs> but um, that's, that's a great question. That's a great question, uh, Reverend Baker. I think I would start by saying uh, one of the things that has changed is uh, that last thing that you said, which was, you know, people coming to the church to get married. I, I don't think that's that's very true anymore. I think that might be a little bit more of a, in our time or, you know, prior to our time. I think that uh, young people who are coming in to the church, you know, when we can get them into the church, um, I'm not necessarily looking for that. I think the young man, and, and uh, we didn't want to commend him for his presentation. I think he's right. This generation, uh, which is, you know, and no insult intended, it's a very selfish generation. And I think most people are looking for what they can, you know, get out of things, right? And Yep, kind of break it up a little bit. Did we lose him? Yeah, we're losing your signal. Yeah, okay. Turn those statistics back around is having young people like this brother um, because, you know, I think we've lost some. Um, credibility, if you will, in the church as it relates to our, our word with the young people. I think they may see people in, in my generation or, or the generation a little bit before me as being maybe out of touch or uh, old school or whatever the case may be. So I think having some young people like this brother who see the value in marriage and who are embracing it and understanding that marriage is God's thing, right? It's not ours. I mean, God did it for us. And um, uh, his awareness of the challenges and really some of those key success factors and, and, and making sure you've got a plan with money and everything being one. Because you do find so many people nowadays who they come into it like, like just basically a partnership or, or something that as long as, you know, it's, it's convenient or it's working, then it, it's all good. But they really need to understand the biblical um, expectation of marriage. And that is it, it, it's for life. You know, it's not based on the good times, but it does say for better, for worse, richer, for poor. So you've got to come into it with a mind made up that uh, I'm not going anywhere. We're going to make it together. And, um, you know, that's not very palatable for young people today. Um, so I think a lot has changed and um, we can't change marriage, obviously. And, and, and we know what's happening with the challenges of people wanting to redefine marriage as being anything they want it to be, right? Two people, whatever the sex is, doesn't matter. And, and, and we know that's not the biblical, um, what God created marriage to be. So we definitely have our challenges, but I, I'm so encouraged by this young man. And I know that it, it was not flesh and blood that revealed it to him, but it was God himself. You know, only having four years in the game, he's talking like a pro. And um, yes. <laughs> if, you, if, you continue, yes. if you can continue to hold on to 
to that, my brother. And there are going to be some challenges. I mean, make no mistake about it. Anybody who's been married any length of time will tell you that, you know, if we're honest, there may have been some times where we're wondering if we, if we made the right decision. But, but you've just got to dismiss that. And one thing that really helped me, if I, can, if I can share one word of wisdom that really was a turning point, not that it was uh, any threats to my marriage, but just the way I looked at it, uh, we went to a family, um, one of those weekend to remember uh, retreats that they do for couples. I think it's a um, uh, campus Christian fellowship, one, one of those organizations. And my pastor at the time, Dr. White over at Bethel Overtown, took took some couples and some things that were said in that seminar. It was, it was a Friday night, Saturday, and, and, and part of Sunday were really transform my thinking of it and, and the one thing was that I took away most of all is that my wife is a gift to me from God and so to reject her is really to reject God and uh when when, when they when I heard that because you know we tend to think that you know we we pick the person and this that and the other but really you know God is the matchmaker right he brought Eve to Adam and and so um when we really embrace that, that, that you were given your wife as a gift, that God did not make a mistake, you might not think he, you know, you got the right one, but we trust God and that dismisses so many thoughts that can come up in your mind. You talk about taking thoughts captive. If we just know that this is God's thing and trust God and stick it out, I tell you, um, it, 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 it disarms the enemy and you can really begin to, to make those those steps that you need to make and those leaps and grow in your marriage because um, that really that really did it for me. So I'm going to catch my breath here and uh, see if anybody else has something to say. But I'll come back. <laughs> Amen. I'll come back beautiful, and... beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Go right ahead. We miss anyone. You'd like to uh, share something or uh, you know, direct a question. Uh, to our author uh, on uh, winning in your marriage. Um, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Anyone else? Anyone else? As they say, going once, <laughs> going twice. <laughs> I, I, I guess I get the flow tonight. Yeah, I, I, you know, as I said, you know, I've been married. Uh, uh, hello, Kevin. I've been, uh, this is my second marriage and, and, and you can't go throughout through life without learning something, whether good or bad. And there were things that I learned in marriage about myself also in marriage. And there are some things that you can improve upon, but you cannot go back and change. But God allows us uh, a second chance. And so uh, being in marriage again also helped me to reflect on some of the things that I did not do as I should have done. I did not reflect on marriage as I should the first time in certain aspects. But that realization is good because it helps me appreciate marriage even more today. And in the past, I said, it's a gift. And I, as I said earlier, I, God has given me a second gift. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, yeah. so much. I, I want to do this. I, I was, I was, uh, Trying to uh, see how I can get the uh, get the book uh, somewhat uh, highlighted, uh, but it's, uh, all of it is not not really coming out on the on on, on the screen here. Uh, it's kind of chopped off a little bit, but uh, but what our dear author has, he says, with God's presence at the center of our home, we can transform our marriages. Amen. 
And uh, I just have one final piece and then we'll, we'll uh, wrap it up unless someone else want to comment on it. Um, uh, Alfred, you, you talk about in your book, you said, um, you, you, you make a statement, you said, now when a couple prays together, uh, it leads to a deep connection in communication, love, faith, and a great marriage. Can you uh, come, uh, comment a little further on that? Yes, I, I believe anything that you do um, together with your spouse, um, you're, you're growing closer, you're growing together. So um, spiritually, um, you're, you're trusting one another um, even more. That's why I say you grow a deeper connection. You grow and you, you love um, one another deeper because, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a trust factor behind that. You just, um, just trust one another and spiritually you just you grow um just by praying together pretty much amen amen we we do know that um you know prayer is you know you know prayer is very 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 powerful but we know when a husband and wife uh come together in prayer um, I mean, you're you're really setting yourself up for a miraculous move of miraculous move of God. And uh, again, one of the uh, another statement that you had uh, said earlier, we um, we we need to get out of the mindset of trying to find time, but but we make time. Uh, you know, that's like putting your foot down and say, you know. No, this is what we're going to do. This is more important uh, than our daily bread. Uh, you know, spending time with our with our wives in prayer. Amen. Amen. Any other any other any other thoughts on what our author have covered? Uh, anyone else would like to uh, respond to what our author has covered? As we've been you know be de been dealing with uh, how to have a winning how to have a winning marriage, a winning marriage. Anyone, anyone else? I've, I've got a couple of questions for him. This is Reverend Adams again. Go, go ahead, Pastor. And, and tell me his name again. Lixon. Lixon Alfred. Lixon Alfred. Okay, Brother Alfred. Um, how long had you known your wife before, uh, before you all got married? So you've been married four years, but how long did you all date or court? I'm just curious as to uh, how you all got together. Three years. Okay. We, Did we, you meet uh, in school or where'd you meet? Yes, we we met in, we met at school. We met at school, and um, um, later on, I found out she was my uncle's caretaker. Hmm. Yeah, we met in 2014. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. As as far as you said, later on, you found out she was your what? Oh, my uncle's caretaker. My uncle's my uncle's nurse. She's a nurse. She was my uncle's nurse. Oh, caretaker. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm I'm no in problem, the car. No I got a little noise, so I couldn't hear exactly. <laughs> what no you problem. Heard. No problem. Okay, and, and again, um, I'd appreciate knowing what what do you think are some keys then for the young people, like you said, who maybe are seeing dating and relationships, and they have no problem maybe just you know living together and and looking at it more from what may be beneficial financially or, or other things, how, what's your approach going to be to try and reach them and, and, and uh, see how God is going to use you to maybe redirect or get them to reconsider marriage? I mean, have you thought about how he wants to use you in this ministry to help to maybe have a renaissance or some kind of a revival of marriage amongst uh, the young people? Yeah, I, I, I've been thinking about that, but um, insights or ideas, I think um, they need to be careful with social media. Um, you know, don't, you can't trust everything we see on social media. There's people out there putting bad, bad information out. Um, 
you know, playing with people's uh, mindset. And um, we can't just, um, I when I was young, I used to believe, uh, I like before I was um, dating, I used to see couples and I used to be like, oh, I want to be, I want, I want my, me and my spouse to be like that. I used to think like that. When I got older, I started to think like, we don't, I don't know how they really are. So um, I just, um, I just be careful with what I say and with stuff that I see on social media, you know, um, stay away from, you know, negativity, bad, bad energy people, you know, we got to be around like-minded people, people who have the same direction as you, um, you know, just, um, you know, grow with people. Go the direction the same with people who's going to, that wants to go the same direction as you, but um to me um we need to um, find a way to bring more souls into the kingdom of God. Number one and number two, social media. Social media is a tool that's that's deteriorating everything. You know, um people is, like I see it every day, and I hear guys say that uh they're catch like a guy will catch his his wife or his girlfriend of of a couple of years cheating, and then they'll be like, "You hear another guy say, see, that's why I don't, don't want to get married.' Oh, that's not that's why I'm not gonna get married." And guys don't understand your path is not the same as theirs. Um, and guys don't understand that Jeremiah 29 verse 11, God has a plan for you. So if you know that in that plan, he he has you know he has a spouse for you. He, he has everything lined up for you. It's it's um it's, it's a journey, but it's a lot. But um yeah, that's, I I think we need to be patient. I have to tell myself that also in other areas and other things. But um be patient because I have cousins who call me and ask me like, you wrote a book on how to win your marriage. Why don't you write a book on um how to how to um find find a wife. And I tell them, like, you have to put out what you want in life. You know, you cannot be um, saying you want a wife, but you're living in the streets or you guys understand what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah. you know, you're still sleeping around and stuff like that. You know, he, you know we are God's people, so he's not going to give, he's not going to put a female in a position to be hurt. So... Um, I, I just tell them like, you know, if that's what you want. Then you you have to put that out. You know, you have to put out in the, in the universe. You got to put out in the energy. You you know, that's a great that's a great point. And, and what you said about social media is so true because you know people are living their lives moment by moment, almost thought by thought, and putting it out there. And if you're gonna have a successful marriage, I tell you what, you you, you probably need to stay off social media because you can't. You can't put how you feel in the moment out there because once you do, it's out there forever, right? Whatever we put out there in that in that social media world out there on the internet, it, it never goes away. And all you're going to do, all of us, as I said before, you're going to have moments where you might say something that you know you shouldn't have said, or you and your wife may have an argument or have a situation, and people just describe so much of their lives, you know, for other people's enjoyment and entertainment. And, and we've got to learn how to protect each other in marriage. Um, you know, how I may be feeling about something at the moment is how I'm feeling at the moment. And an yeah. uh, uh, hour or so later, I may not be feeling that way. And you put something out there and, and people have run with it and commented on it. So I think that's a great point you make about social media and the dangers of, um, of social media. And the enemy is so adept at using it to divide and to destroy us, right? Because, um, you know, words do matter. And um, we got to be careful about what we let come out of our mouths because uh, it can't come back. And certainly what we put out there on the internet um, is, is the same thing. It could come back to haunt you 10 years, 15 years later, something you said or some comment you made about somebody else's situation. So we really do have to be slow to speak, quick to hear and, um, you know, slow to get angry. So. Again, great, great wisdom on your part. And I'm just praying that, that God will use you, young man. I, I feel that he's really Thank called you. for such a time as this. And that you, because 
the world is still looking for God. They just, they don't, they don't know it, you know, so they're trying to just fill themselves with all this other stuff. But when they see somebody authentic like you, and if you can just keep yourself uh, unspotted from the world, as the scripture says, he's going to use you as a magnet. And I can see you really having a, a strong ministry, helping young people in their marriages um, to know what it really is all about. And then the last thing I'll say, uh, Dr. Baker, and then I'll get off is we have to remember also, I think this helps me. My wife is not just my wife, but she's my sister, right? You know, she, she's my sister in Christ. So, you know, marriage is an earthly institution, right? So when we go to heaven, there won't be any marriage. So if that relationship, the, the relationship that I really want to make sure stays strong is our brother and sister connection. Um, because so many times people can exploit each other unknowingly. Uh, but, but if it's my sister, that, that puts another spin on it, you know, in, in, in terms of how I want to protect her and how I want to uh, uh, affirm her and that kind of thing. She's going to be my sister in Christ when we get to heaven. She won't be my wife anymore. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so we see, if we see our spouses not only as, as, as a part of us, but also our brother and sister in Christ, I think it helps us to deal more honestly and, and more uh, with their best interest in mind, just like just like Jesus did. I mean, he gave himself up for his bride. And uh, and that's what we're called to do. So uh, I'll, I'll shut up and let somebody else get on. Amen. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pastor. Uh, anyone else want to uh, want to comment? We're kind of winding winding yeah. down here and I have a couple. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, Pastor. How are you doing? Good evening, sir. Good evening, Kevin. Um, I I, I kind of signed in late, but I kind of got the last message and um a point that the brother made there is this very same point I was sharing with another brother. Like God's sons are set aside for his daughters, and his daughters are set aside for his sons. So that's a very good point. And secondly, um. What, what what he said about social media is right, but we have to learn as believers to be in the world and, and not of the world, and we have to be able to use these platforms for the kingdom of God to bring his message out there because there's a remnant out there that is sharing messages every day on social media, and that's all they do, you understand? So, and people get that message. So use it as a tool to get your book, get your information out there rather than, 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 than personal. It's, it's not, it, it should never be for personal. It's for social, um, so, so social gathering. It's not for personal gathering. So um, as you, as, as every opportunity you get, to share the word of God with, with, with someone, whether it's on, 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 on social media, whether it's to post a video, you know, of sharing a point on your book or a quote from your book or whatever. Um, I like to I like to get a copy of the book. It sounds interesting. I heard the end part of it. What's the, what's the name of the book, Pastor? How to Winning Your Marriage. How to Winning Your mar- Marriage. Sound like, sound like My a name great is Lixon Alfred. Linkson Alfred. Um, yes, Linkson Alfred. Linkson Alfred. I'll definitely yeah. get a copy of that book. And Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. Send me the information that I support your book and get a copy of it. You know, um, I have another young brother that works with me as well, a young married man with one child. And so he's 23 years old and he's doing the mm-hmm. husband and the marriage and everything like that. So, you know, I, it, it feels joy in my heart to see young men in this because, like, we, the society, especially young black men, society is teaching us that that's not the way to go. But, you know, we have to come beyond that and understand that we are called for God's kingdom and God's purpose and to bring godly children into this world and to raise them up to to, to, to be to, to be the light for the next generation yes yeah, so and because as long as there's someone to stand in the gap for god he's always listening so 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So appreciate the 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 the, the lesson. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you so much, brother. Brother Kevin, brother uh, Alfred, if you would uh, put in the, uh, you can go into the chat. If you're able to drop the link, uh, the link to your book uh, in the chat. If not, uh, just uh, just send it to me and anyone that is uh, interested. I can uh, I can make it. Uh, I can make the link available available to them. Again, special special thanks. The brother uh, Lixon, uh, Afrit, uh, thank God for him, uh, just 30, 30 years old and uh, really have a, a real solid passion uh, for marriages. And I truly believe God will use him uh, to be, uh, be, the, be the example for the, uh, for the um, millennials and, and, uh, and even folks, uh, you know, our age as well, as a word of as a word of encouragement, he was able to uh, put that. Uh, the link has been put in the uh, in the chat section. You all should 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 have it. Again, if for some reason you miss it, uh, just reach out to me, and um, and I will make it. I will make it available. Again, thank you all so much. Great uh, great conversation. Great uh, great participation. We uh, want to uh, jump straight in. We we have some 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 uh, some drawings here that we want to make available, and uh, we want to jump jump ahead and uh, do that uh, do that right now. Um, trust that. Uh, can everyone see that uh, screen there? Can everyone see the screen? Yes. Yeah. Am I am I missing? Uh, Am I missing anyone's name? You're missing my name, Pastor. Nobody wants that? No. Oh, maybe, maybe. Um, Johnny. OK. Mm -hmm. OK, I think, I don't believe he's here. And I don't know about that guy that would take that guy off. Yeah, tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, any anyone we're missing? We're missing anyone? Again, we we have uh, uh, three gift three, three uh, gift cards for uh, for Walmart, uh, and we have a uh, flat screen television. So uh, we uh, don't have as as large of a, a group as we usually have and um and so um about about half half of you will walk away with something this evening uh be, be, because of that do want to tell you um if 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 you are a winner uh if you would just text me your complete address we we've, we've been having some problems with uh the winner's address uh if you just text me your address I'm going to, uh, let me, I'm going to put my, no, I can't do that here, but my, my number is 305-335-9174. Just text me your address so that we can drop these uh, gift cards in the, in the mail tomorrow. So here we go. Here we go. Can I get a drum roll? No, just kidding. Okay, here we go. Okay, I think that's uh, I think that's uh, the doctor. Uh, um, I think he left us. I don't think he's here. Uh, Any? He yeah, I don't see it here. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go again. Okay, we got the guest our guest speaker, brother Alfred. Uh, con con congratulations. Uh, these, these items, uh, oh. brother Afrit, this, these items are being provided to you by the Madeline uh, Law Group. So, if you would just send me your complete address, uh, that would be great. So, you're a winner. And uh, Thank you. Uh, yeah, Pastor Williams, who usually do this, apologize for not being here. He's uh, doing a, a, some family 
doing a, a family gathering with his daughter just came into town and need to get her out to dinner for her birthday. So we, 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 we want to encourage that. Okay, we're going to uh, do a few more here. The one and only uh, Joseph Kumi. Brother Kumi, you're with us. Uh, Brother Kumi is my, uh, my mechanic, uh, one of the world greatest mechanics. Amen. Uh, again, we'll get that. Uh, send me your address, uh, Deacon Kumi. Okay, here we go. Wow, one of our first timers, Pastor Adams. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. You know what they say about favor, right? <laughs> amen. <laughs> God, God bless you. And um, and this will be uh, this will be for the flat screen, uh, for the flat screen television. This is the winner of the flat screen television. Uh, those we have in the runnings is Brother uh, Mark L., Lewis Tyler, Johnny Darrell, and Kevin Young. Here we go. Tell me. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Brother Dare, you are the uh, yeah. you are the uh, winner. Oh. You are the winner, uh, uh, Pastor. Oh. Huh? Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. More than likely, Pastor uh, uh, Gregory Williams will more than likely deliver that uh, to you probably this weekend. Okay. Uh, so, con uh, con congratulations, Jim. Again, thank you, thank you all for uh, for your participation uh, this th this evening. Yes. We are we we now want to uh, want to close out in, in prayer again. We thank we thank God for all that He has done. We thank God for each one of you. We thank God uh, for our uh, speaker. We uh, we thank Him for the uh, great job uh, that He's done, and we pray that. Uh, it, this will encourage him uh, to uh, reach out to many people in his sphere of influence and continue to continue to share uh, with them. Uh, we're going to close out in in prayer, and I'm going to have uh, our dear, uh, dear dear pastor. It's been great, uh, Pastor Adams. Can I? I want to. Uh, you're you're uh, you're actually driving now. I was going to put you on the center screen. Want to have you, if you would close us out in prayer again, we want to pray for all of our marriages, all of our marriages, that, that if there's anything I believe that, uh, at least from my standpoint, that I'm walking away with this evening is to, to be encouraged to have a, a really solid biblical vision uh, for uh, my marriage. And, um, and so we thank God for that. Uh, Pastor Adams, would you be kind enough to close us out in prayer again to all of you that have tuned in? We thank you all so much for joining us uh, this evening. God bless you all. Pastor Adams, please. All right, Dr. Baker, thank you so much. And, and before I pray, I have to just say hello to my beloved brother, Lewis Tyler, uh, if he's still on. God bless you, brother Tyler. When you sing that song, and, and every time he sings, he's so anointed. Uh, tears come to my eyes. So thank you for blessing us with that um, with that beautiful song that you sang earlier today. Brother Tyler is a special guy. And I'm, I'm assuming you know this already, Reverend Baker. I don't know how long you've known him, but he's a very special person in my life. We go way back to early time in my ministry at Bethel Overtown, where I had the pleasure of meeting him and even ministering to his uh his precious, I believe his grandmother, Sylvester Adams at that time. So love you, Brother Tyler. You're just good to reacquaint us on this line tonight. So let us He's pray. Especially in my Father, life, too. We thank you tonight. Absolutely. Father, we thank you tonight for uh, blessing us and gathering us on this 
Zoom session, allowing us, God, to be inspired to know that we can win in marriage. We're not going to take our cues from the world and what they say about how many marriages fail. We know if you be for us, who can be against us? And so, Lord, we know that you ordained marriage as the very first institution before there was even a church. Uh, you put Adam and Eve together and you said that they were made in your image. And so we recognize the power of marriage and why it comes under attack the way that it does, because the devil hates you and therefore he hates anything that represents you. But God, we're standing strong today. And I thank you for the vision you've given to Reverend Baker to assemble these men. And I thank you for uh, the young brother tonight who, uh, even though he's a neophyte at marriage, Lord, you have inspired him and you've spoken to his heart so that he can speak to this generation, this generation that's at risk, that they might know, Lord God, that marriage is, uh, there's nothing more powerful than a man and a woman coming together spiritually and every other way and recognizing their power. And you make that third strand and the three-stranded cord is very difficult to break. And so, God, we thank you for just reminding us of how precious a gift we have. I pray for every marriage under the sound of my voice, no matter how long or short. I declare right now that no weapon formed against it is going to prosper. I declare right now, Lord God, that we are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. And I declare, Lord God, that men and women will uh, in marriage, we'll honor each other and serve one another. No big eyes, no little views, but we'll recognize that we're equal in terms of worth. You have placed the man at the head simply because you wanted him to be accountable to you, just as the father is the head of the son and so forth. And so God, help us just to not allow the world and the enemy to pervert what marriage is all about, that we might recognize its beauty, its power. And we might recognize its relevance, God, because if men and women stop getting together and bringing forth godly seed, then where would this world be? So we bless every marriage today and we speak, oh God, life and we come against any attacks and any second guessing that we, maybe we don't have the right one. The devil is a liar today. Mm -hmm. You didn't make no mistake giving us the wife that we need because oneness is not sameness. We're different, oh God, but together we are more than what we can ever be alone. And so, Lord, we just bless you right now. We pray, Father God, for this young man and for the challenges. He's going to come under attack, God, because he's trying to promote something that you established. But we pray for him right now, Lord, as Jesus declared. I pray for you, Peter, even though the devil wants to shift you like wheat, but he's not going to have his way with you. And this young man's marriage is going to stand the test of time. He's going to overcome every trial because we are overcomers through Christ who loves us. I declare right now that it does not yet appear the outreach and the places and the people he will touch, uh, even, oh God, helping to, to dispel the notions that same-sex marriage and all of these other so-called marriages are legitimate. But Lord, it is evident in what you have made for anything that cannot reproduce, anything, oh God, that cannot uh, go forth is not of you. You are God that said, be fruitful and multiply. And so we thank you for that, Father God. And I pray right now, Lord God, for those who are mixed up and messed up, that we will be patient, that we will not be um, condemning of them or arrogant or high-minded, but help us to humble ourselves, oh God, that we might be uh, um, that avenue, that vehicle that you use to draw men back to yourself. Help us to lift up the name of Jesus, for he was not sent into the world to condemn the world. And so help us to be careful as we condemn others who are maybe doing some things that they shouldn't be do. But help us, help us, Lord God, to have compassion, to have understanding, to know it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord, that you will, oh God, do the very thing that you set out to do. All we need to do is be available and you will help us, Lord God, to know what to say, what to do at the right time. So we just bless you, Lord God. We pray for uh, Reverend Baker's mother, for her healing. We pray for um, any marriages and, and health issues with in our spouses and, and, and marriages, oh God, we pray for our children and grandchildren, and we just thank you for the privilege of being able to be used by you and be able to have a marriage, oh God, that will stand the very test of time. We love you today. We bless you today. We bless every marriage in the mighty and the marvelous, the wonderful name of Jesus, the anointed one, I pray, and let all the brothers on the line who agree say hallelujah and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord.
Amen. Again, thank Amen. you all so much. Thank you all so much uh, for tuning in. And we'll uh, we'll see you again next month. Have a blessed weekend. God bless God you bless all. You. Bye -bye. you all too. Bye-bye.